plastic bags, an item so familiar that it is almost invisible. They are compact, cheap, convenient to the point of being given away for free every day. But that is why every year, more than 5,000 billion plastic bags are consumed worldwide, equivalent to 160,000 bags per second. They are light, but they do not disintegrate easily. A plastic bag only takes five seconds to produce, is used for less than 15 minutes, but can last in the environment for up to 500 years. The question is, can we do it differently? Can the bag you just threw away come back cleaner, more durable, and useful once again? Today, you will join me inside a recycling plant where old plastic is regenerated, where technology, engineering, and human consciousness converge, turning waste into resources. This is the journey of a plastic bag from landfill to store shelf. Millions of plastic bags are collected and recycled at this factory every day. Before being brought to the factory, the bags are sorted by color and type of plastic. At this factory, most of them are white PE plastic bags, which are the most common type of bag in daily life. Imagine trying to squeeze a bunch of whole plastic bags into a hot plastic extruder. They are light, thin, hollow, hard to control, and will jam the machine. That's why shredding comes next. A normal bag will be fed into a rotary knife shredder, where steel blades spin at hundreds of RPM, cutting the bag into small pieces, about one to five square centimeters in size. These pieces are not only easier to handle, but also have increased surface area allowing for faster washing, more even drying, and more even melting when heated later. After being shredded, the plastic pieces enter an important stage, cleaning. Because the quality of the recycled plastic pellets depends almost entirely on the cleanliness of the input materials. The plastic pieces are put into a hot water mixing tank with a small amount of mild detergent added to soften the ink, grease, and dirt. A large spiral screw continuously mixes and pushes the plastic to move, creating mechanical friction, loosening the dirt. If the plastic bag still has stickers or glue, the machine will also automatically filter and push light impurities to the water surface, then be removed by the foam separation mechanism. After being cleaned, the plastic pieces are passed through pipes with a continuous flow of hot air. Keeping the temperature around 70 to 90 degrees Celsius, the plastic pieces are dried and then blown to a warehouse where we have dry plastic ready for the next process. Why is it so strict? Just a few percent of the remaining water vapor when fed into the extruder will turn into high pressure steam. The result? Plastic pellets are foamy, porous, less durable, or have a strange smell. Therefore, clean, dry, uniform plastic is a mandatory requirement. This is not only a cleaning step, but also a stage that determines the quality of the entire chain later on. Extrusion is the heart of the entire recycling process. This is the stage of converting solid plastic into liquid form to regenerate old materials into new raw materials. However, before that, the plastic pieces continue to be crushed further to increase the contact area, helping the extrusion process to take place smoothly. The nylon pieces, once completely clean and dry, will be fed into the feed hopper of the screw extruder. Inside the machine is a long spiral screw located in a heating chamber heated by an industrial resistor. The screw rotates at a steady speed, both compressing and mixing, and gradually pushing the plastic pieces towards the outlet, while the temperature gradually increases from 160 to 200 degrees Celsius. At the highest temperature area, the nylon pieces begin to melt into a liquid stream of material, similar to condensed milk powder. Next, the plastic stream is led through the die head and 
forms long, thin plastic fibers. These fibers are immediately cooled by dipping them in a cold water bath, then fed into a rotary cutter to create small cylindrical or bullet-shaped plastic beads, only a few millimeters in diameter. These are recycled PE pellets, intermediate materials that can be flexibly used for many different purposes. Blowing bags, making films, producing flexible pipes, or mixing with virgin plastic to reduce costs while maintaining relative quality. With a standardized line, an extruder can produce 300 to 800 kilograms of recycled plastic pellets per hour, depending on the capacity, quality of raw materials, and purity of the input polyethylene. Now the recycled pellets are ready for the next stage, forming a thin yet strong plastic film. The core material for new bags. This process takes place in a system called a blown film extruder. The heart of the system is a second extruder, where the recycled plastic pellets, sometimes mixed with 10 to 20% virgin plastic to increase flexibility and gloss, are fed from a hopper. Inside the machine, a spiral screw continues to heat up, melting the plastic into a liquid form. The hot plastic is then forced up and through a circular die. This is the most unique part of blown film technology. Compressed air is blown from the center of the die, expanding the plastic molten plastic into a hollow plastic tube, like a giant nylon balloon, continuously expanding vertically. Why is it necessary to inflate? Because this principle helps to create a film with uniform thickness in both directions, saving raw materials and allowing flexible adjustment of width. Just change the film pulling speed and compressed air pressure. The entire plastic bladder is cooled by a concentric cooling fan, then passes through the nip rollers, turns into two flat layers of film, and is rolled into a nylon roll. Each roll can be hundreds of meters long and is transferred to the bag cutting section. With an average capacity, a PE film blowing line can produce from 50 to 150 kilograms of plastic film per hour depending on the film thickness and die width. The thinner the film, the faster the film output, but also requires extremely sophisticated control. And so, from tiny plastic particles, once again, the material transforms into a shiny, flexible roll of film, ready for the final step, turning into complete bags. When the rolls of plastic film are ready, they are sent to a finishing machine system, where each meter of flat film will be turned into bags that are complete in form and function. The first step is cutting and shaping the size. The film rolls go through an automatic cutting machine that can be adjusted to the length depending on the type of bag. 25 centimeters, 35 centimeters or more, the optical sensor system will read the signal from the roller and the cutting command is performed accurately to the millimeter. Next is the bottom welding step of the bag. This step determines the firmness of the product. The bag stops at the cutting point. In a split second, the heat sealing blade or ultrasonic welding head will press the two layers of plastic together under a temperature of 180 to 250 degrees Celsius to help link the plastic molecules into a seamless weld. The cutting speed, heat holding time, and welding pressure are all automatically programmed and adjusted according to the production speed. After cutting and welding, the bag will continue to be transferred to the strap punching machine. Finally, the bag is counted, folded, packaged, and the bag will be collected into dozens, hundreds, or stacked in layers in the packaging. A complete line can produce from 10,000 to 30,000 bags per hour, depending on the complexity of the design and the thickness of the film.
And so, from a bag that was once thrown into the trash, it has been processed, regenerated, and returned to life in a dignified, sustainable, and more valuable way than ever. Recycling plastic bags is not just a technical matter. It is also a social choice. When we decide how should we dispose of waste, a bag, if thrown away in the environment, can take from 200 to 500 years to decompose. But if sorted correctly, recycled correctly, it can return to the consumer life cycle in just a few days. From the engineer who designs the extruder, to the garbage collector, to the line operator, everyone is involved in this journey. And you, the person watching this video, if you start sorting your waste or choose products labeled 100% recycled, you are also contributing to the life cycle of each bag. A seemingly fragile plastic bag can suggest a whole world of technology behind it. An old bag, if treated properly, can continue to serve another three, five, even 10 lives. Recycling is not magic. It is science. It is technology. It is the spirit of not wasting any resources. And that journey starts from very small things, like the bag you just put down, or the decision you are about to make. Thank you for watching until the end. If you find this journey worthwhile, please share to spread the meaning of recycling.